I have a beneficiary IRA account and I've had it since 2009 when our father passed. Every year I keep getting something where my understanding is I need to move it out of the beneficiary account into like my name. As I called customer service and talked with someone and let them know what I was trying to do and they told me to fill out the paperwork, fax it in and do it as a withdrawal. And I'm like, I don't want it cashed out. I just want to move it as is into the individual account. What she was trying to do is transfer um, the funds into a fund um, that would still be tax deferred, but better managed by the people that were assisting her with her financial plan. And in doing so, following their advice, um, she unknowingly transferred out of the qualified account to a non-qualified account. She didn't really appreciate what had happened. As soon as I got the email back from my accountant that this was what I owed, it didn't seem right. So then I took a minute, went away, and came back and looked at it again and was just in complete and total shock. I had no idea. She was never ever clearly warned that there would be a tax result as to this transfer. <sighs> so I, I asked him, well, how can we fix this? And he's like, you can't fix it. You missed the, you missed the period. There is no grace period for an inherited IRA, so it's a very, very tricky situation. In this case, what had happened is she had inadvertently transferred over $600,000 out of this inherited IRA, and she was looking at a tax bill of in excess of $300,000. So initially, one half the value of that would be lost. I was basically just sick. I think I called in. I didn't go to work for two days. I was just sick in bed. When she called in and spoke to their home office, she was very, very clear that she wanted to maintain these same investments. She didn't want to change these, these investments. She wanted to continue those for the long term. And so the lack of a warning, plus the expressed desire to maintain the investments in those stocks and equity positions, really you know, it was a very clear indication that she did not want to pull this out of the qualified account. Even though it's in my name, it's, it wasn't mine to destroy, you know. Um, there's five siblings, you know, and children, and, and our dad, you know, he came here years ago from Ghana, and he saved, and he invested in other things, and this is what he, and I, I'm not the oldest child, but for some reason he felt I would be responsible, so having drop the ball on that it wasn't an easy thing so I went on AVO listed out my situation briefly and um, a few lawyers online are like oh you can't do anything with this oh it's too late and all of this and John called towards the end of the day and um, he, he didn't take it as it being impossible, but you know, I like the feedback when I talk with him. I like this, <laughs> I like the sound of his voice, and I felt hopeful. When I talked with him, he understood what I did. He understood it from my perspective. They were very arrogant, uh, they were very callous, and um, I think they were really very, very defensive. And going through this process, you know, first we had to, to look at the contacts that were made, and then we actually even got into the forms that the company used itself. And so we were able to pull those forms out and show them that their form itself is misleading in and of itself because they're using the same form for an internal transfer and a withdrawal. And so that would kind of let the reader think that perhaps um, you're not going to have a problem. And middle stages, they were really not overwhelmingly receptive. And so we just kept going up the chain, if you will, trying to find someone to assist us. I was able to talk with them and, and over and over and over, and he, and he wore them down, or I don't know what he did, but he got them to listen. And eventually, um, nine months after everything started, it was, resolved. This was a very challenging situation and, and largely because years have gone by now um, you know, where she's trying to sort out what to do. She is um, falling into collection status and so what we were able to do is defer collection, 
you know, with the IRS and with the Franchise Tax Board to enable us to resolve this um, either with the company or with the private letter ruling. Um, then we turned around and we were able to work with the company and we were actually able to get corrected 1099s showing that um, the only amounts that were taken out were the required minimum distributions. So, you know, years have gone, got, gone by, but we were able to put this back in place so that way she was where she was supposed to be and we were able to completely make the tax go away, which was in excess of $300,000. Thank you.